We've become very good at detecting planets orbiting other stars, and some of these exoplanets are quite strange to say the least. But which ones are the weirdest? Hang on to your hats as we travel to the five weirdest planets in all of the entire universe. Ready? Let's go. At number five, and first up on our list, is not just a planet, but a whole solar system, that of TRAPPIST-1. At just 39 light years away, it can be considered to be in our local neighbourhood. This is noteworthy because the star has seven rocky planets, five of which are similar in size to the Earth, and three which lie within the Goldilocks zone, where liquid water is possible. The star is a very small red dwarf, only just larger than Jupiter. This means that these shiny little worlds orbit very close to their star. The whole solar system could fit within the orbit of Mercury with plenty of space to spare. In fact, the planets are so close to each other that they would appear quite large in the sky. This also means that they orbit their star at breakneck speeds, with years ranging from 19 days at the longest to just one and a half days for the closest planet. Due to their proximity to their sun, they're likely to be tidally locked, meaning very large temperature fluctuations, and they would also be subjected to extreme radiation from the star. So although life is maybe possible, it would face some challenges. But if one sun has a number of potentially life-supporting planets, why not others? Trappist-1 is fascinating, and I could quite easily spend a whole video talking about this place. But time to move on. And so, grab some Blue Sun Cola and let's carry on to our next destination. Straight in at number 4, we come to Kepler-16b, also dubbed Tatooine. This is a planet orbiting a binary star system. The stars, called Kepler-16a and 16b, are an orange and a red star, considerably cooler and less luminous than our Sun. The planet itself is a gas giant, slightly smaller than Saturn. Even though the planet has no solid surface, it may have moons, and these could have atmospheres. Although orbiting at 104 million kilometres from the binary star, Kepler-16b is right at the outer edge of the Goldilocks zone, and with temperatures likely to be around minus 85 degrees Celsius, any life there would definitely need a big coat. The two stars rotate around each other in 41 days, with the planet orbiting around them both in 228 days. This means that if you were standing on the planet and always had the sun above you, over the course of a Keplerian year, the suns would perform a strange dance in the sky. At a distance of just 245 light years away, this particular planet is definitely not in a galaxy far, far away. Next on the list we come to the jauntily named J1407b, or as it has been called, Super Saturn. This is a planet orbiting the star 1 Swasp J1407, located in the Centaurus constellation about 434 light years away. This massive planet is a gas giant, probably about 13 to 26 times the mass of Jupiter, and that's definitely putting it in the brown dwarf territory. But what makes it so special is its ring system. The ring system of this planet stretches out with a diameter of about 180 million kilometers. That's larger than the orbit of Mercury. Comparing it to Saturn, the rings of J1407b would be this big. So large are the rings that if you replace Saturn with J1407b, then, and here's where I hope my maths is right, according to my calculations from the Earth, it would look this big. There are even gaps between the rings that might hold moons, and one major gap here could hold a moon up to 80% the mass of the Earth. Could there be life here? J1407 is a young star believed to be only about 16 million years old, and it is thought that as the planet ages the rings will coalesce to form more and more moons, until eventually the ring system has all but disappeared. Here at number 2 we have the very weird Gliese 436b. The star Gliese 436 is a red dwarf star, found about 30 light years from the Earth. And the planet is a Neptune-like planet, but orbiting just over 4 million miles from the star. And that's much closer than the orbit of Mercury around our own Sun. This means that Gliese 436b orbits its star in just two and a half days, and has a surface temperature of about 440 degrees Celsius. Nothing too weird so far, but hang on. 
Astronomers would expect to find the atmosphere of this planet to contain a lot of methane, but instead they found large amounts of carbon monoxide. This suggests that the planet actually contains large amounts of water. And here's where it gets really sci-fi. It's thought that because of the immense gravitational forces exerted by the planet's core, the water is a weird form of ice. Yes, that's right, ice at 440 degrees. Put some of that in your drink to cool it down, and you'd not have a drink for long. Or a kitchen. The planet has a rocky core at the centre, surrounded by this layer of hot ice, and then finally, an atmosphere of hydrogen and helium. And finally, taking the top spot and therefore the oddest planet on our list, we find Hat P7b. This orbits the star Hat P7 in a retrograde manner. This means that it orbits in the opposite direction to the spin of its star. But that isn't what's weird. Firstly, it's a gas giant, a bit bigger than Jupiter. Secondly, it orbits very close to its star, only 5.7 million miles away. And orbiting the star in a little over two days. Again, a little extreme, but not what's truly weird about this planet. Because it's so close to its star, Hat P7b is tidally locked, meaning that one side always faces the star, and temperatures on this side will reach 2,500 degrees Celsius. Winds blow from the hot side to the cold side, where aluminium oxide, or corundum, would rain down. This means that the aluminium oxide melted on the hot side of the planet, would rain down on the cold side of the planet as rubies and sapphires. This planet would certainly make you rich, but if that's what it takes, I'm more than happy to stay poor. Maybe. Sadly, we've come to the end of our tour of the weird and strange places in the universe, but I've only just scratched the surface. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment and maybe tell me about your favourite exoplanet. You never know. One day in the future I might venture out again to find some more planetary oddities. But for now, thank you for watching.